You ready to roll? Welcome back to the Bible Reading Project. We are hoping to inspire you to read, <laughs> read your Bible every single day. Zero excuse. I'm with my best friend, Ronnie. Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie. It's good to have you in the house today. Me and Ronnie here talking about the Bible. You were trash. Glad to be here, Mikhail. You were trashing uh, Macintosh computers a second ago. So before we jump into the red letters of Jesus, why are you trashing Mac? Okay, the Macintosh for, computer. I felt I, I, I felt the, like your argument was terrible. No, it was actually really good. It was All really right, good. Go so I'll it. explain it better. All right, roll. So I can get the same exact computer, same exact specs, same exact speed and memory and all of it. Uh-huh. Same exact computer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I can either pay uh-huh. five hundred dollars, okay, or I can pay fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, good for the same exact computer. All right, great. And why would I do that? Okay, how many? How many? This is Dale. How many Dale laptops? So I've had this computer for three years. Okay, why? Why three years? What? What happened to the other one? To the uh, I would I left the church that I was working at. You had to turn it in. Yeah. Okay. Before that, what? How long did your Dale last? Mm, I still have it. I'm. I don't use it. Why wouldn't you use it? Because it's old. So once it gets old, you have to buy a new one because it's not good anymore. So now you've bought two. $500, Five hundred dollars. That's a thousand. Mm-hmm. How many of these have you owned in your own personal life over the years? This have is you my used second it? one. So you're a grand or more in, right? Yeah. Okay. I've had three Macintosh computers since 1990. Mm-hmm. I've never had a virus. Mm-hmm. I've never had them break down. How many viruses have you gotten? How many times have you had to take it to get it repaired? Any? Zero. Zero. But it's three years old. Yeah. All right, I get mine's going to outlast yours. I'm a Mac guy all the way live. Yeah. I think mine are better than yours. That's what we're praying But we're not here to talk about that. <laughs> we're here to talk about I'm a Mac guy. You're a Satan user computer. <laughs> yeah. But yet we get along great, right? We do. Something brand new, man. We're doing the red letters of Jesus. Yeah. We're jumping in. Do you like it the last two weeks? It's this is really week good. three in. It's been, really been good. fun. We're pr- pulling it out. Mm-hmm. But something happened special today. It did. Right here at Believer's Church on the corner of Pope and Bomar, we have we put our vivid vision together of the next four years of what this corner is going to be doing for the kingdom of God. And part of that is 2981 Coffee. We've been testing coffees roasters yada yada do dog day we finally landed on somebody i think we had a good time today we we went to duluth georgia phoenix roasters yeah. man right there boom phoenix roasters tell me what you thought about them i thought they were really good yeah good coffee good what people. did you like about them most uh, I like the people. They're just very relational. Oh, yeah. It was all the, walk in the door. Here's what they say. We're about relationship and discipleship. Yeah. They're on a mission, not yeah. just to have the top 1% bean right. on the professional roasting scale. Yeah. So they're really, man, they're good at what they do. Yes. We loved it. So uh, I need to do something. We're going to be promoing uh, Phoenix Roasters. I got the Panama blend. Like nice. It's dark. I like it dark, dark, yeah. dark. But on the back, it says coffee matters. With a mission to create local and global change, Phoenix Roasters uses directly traded and top ranked coffee to provide dignified and empowering work for people in undeveloped countries around the world. So every cup you buy, every yeah. bag you buy, it goes to support missions and people that are working in missions and local right. communities in other countries. So Phoenix Roasters, so here's what I need you to do, man. He's reach behind, you get the black rifle. Go ahead and grab the bag. Um, we're going to go ahead and retire yes. Black Rifle because we are now launching out with Phoenix Roasters. So yeah. if you're out there and you're looking for a great, I mean, let's not fake it. Right? Is it good or is it not? It's really good. It's really good. Yeah. Like, like, we're not going to fake it. I'm not going to drink it. I even told them I ain't drinking it <laughs> if it's not good. Yeah. Uh, and I like it strong. And, yeah. man, it was good coffee all the way around. We tried several blends. Again, their mission's great, but the coffee's good. Yeah. And what we said, the reason we hadn't really opened up yet is because we didn't want to open up with a bad cup of coffee, yeah, right? right? It's hard to kind of backpedal. So we think we found a good cup of coffee. Over the next several months, we're going to be working on blends and working on, man, nitro brews and all kind of stuff. So, yeah. uh, again, Phoenix Roasters. And so we're just going to retire. If you'd like to take your hat off, we're going to be retiring Black Rifle Coffee. Um I'm going to miss them. That was pretty good, actually. 
As a matter of fact, it's such good coffee. People yeah. think we're kidding. We're not here to banter. We're going to talk about the Bible, but the, <laughs> the Bible and coffee, right? Yeah, you got to. Uh, it's such good coffee, mm -hmm. and I'm not fading because people know black I am rifle. a black rifle dude. Yes, love their coffee for sure. Love what they do too. Yes, but uh, it's worth retiring for man this roaster right here. Yeah. So uh, I even went online today. It's, you're gonna probably hate me. I canceled <laughs> my subscription to Black Rifle Coffee. Ah, wow, that's huge. To go with these folks. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and get subscriptions coming in because, man, I love it. I'm sure Black Rifle is still great. We're not mm -hmm. retiring it because it's bad. Mm -hmm. It's incredible coffee. But retiring it because we found a mission and we found a purpose that, man, suits what we want to do. So shout out to Phoenix Roasters. I want to go ahead and just retire the bag into your hands. You, you do with it whatever you want right. to do. <laughs> Take Phoenix Roasters, man. Put it back on the back by Quacker McQuackerson. <laughs> and uh, so shout out to Phoenix Roasters, man. Thank you for helping us today. Yes. Thank you for all you, you did to help us find the great coffee. Thank you for everything you did to spend, man, all afternoon with us, yeah, right? Oh, yeah. And, dude, they're uh, – their uh, keg brews, whoo, awesome. It was Sweet. so good. Let's jump in. It's going to be good. Matthew chapter 3, all week long. Uh, we're doing it a little different. We're taking the red letters of Jesus, a passage uh, from Jesus, and then we're just applying it to what's going on in our world today. Yes. We've already come to this conclusion. Number one, Jesus is going to say things that will offend us. Right. Uh, the way Jesus thinks uh, far outweighs what we think. That's his right. wisdom over our wisdom. And we decided that if his wisdom differs from ours, well, it's time for us to change and go to his wisdom. So Matthew chapter 3, let's jump in. The whole chapter this week. In those days, John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and began preaching it. And his message was, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord's coming and clear the road for him. John's clothes were woven with coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food he ate locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and from all Judea and all over the Jordan Valley went out to see and hear John. And when they confessed their sins, he baptized them in the Jordan River. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed, who warned you to flee the coming wrath. Prove by the way you live that you've repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I baptize with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But someone is coming soon who's greater than I am, so much greater than I am not worthy even to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He is ready to separate the shaft from the wheat with his winnowing fork, and then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into his barn, but burning the shaft with never-ending fire. And then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I'm the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, Jesus came up out of the water. The heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, It's my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. Um, so we, we left off last week with Luke 2, right? Yeah. Uh, 41 through 52. With Jesus in the temple in his dad's house, right? Did you not know I had to be about daddy's business, right? right. And then this long 18-year gap of nothing. Yeah. Like, you just get Jesus at age 12, he went home, he grew up, he was obedient to his parents, yeah. and then 18 years later, uh, we have him show back up, which always, you kind of want to know, well, what went on in the 18 years, right? Well, in the chapter that introduces him, mm -hmm. uh, 18 years long, like, this is the introduction, like, let's get ready to rumble, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus is coming in, but before the introduction of Jesus is about to say something, because these are going to be the first words that he says um, before, well, the first words he says after age 12. Mm -hmm. So 12 to 30, here comes his first words. And the words are tucked into a story about a dude named John the Baptist. Yeah. Here's what I want to ask you. 
Uh, last night, I got on Netflix and I watched a, an LGBTQ documentary called Pray Away. Have mm-hmm. you seen it? Pray It Away, I, I think was the name no, of it. I'll, I'm, check, it I'll check it out. Uh, I was interested. Yeah. Uh, I was very touched. Mm. I was touched to because back in the 70s and 80s, there came this uh, real rise of an anti gay lesbianism movement, mm. right? And in the the movement that started was called Exodus, and it was basically what you would think Exodus are, people in the gay lifestyle looking for freedom, trying to come out of the bondage of that, to find life in Jesus, get life in Jesus, and be free in Jesus, right? right. So, And kind of accordingly, if I could get you to quit being gay and marry a girl, it's a win-win, a notch in my belt, right? Mm-hmm. And we're just going to teach you to grit your teeth and love Jesus and find freedom and and it was good. I mean, it was a great movement, and I don't know much about it, but uh, just from what I was researched a little bit and watched on the documentary. Um, however, because it was, I would think, put out by the LGBTQ community, mm-hmm. it was pretty much these people are nuts. <laughs> you know, uh, they're, they're screwed up. They they basically ruined our lives. Mm-hmm. This Exodus movement ruined my whole life because I tried my whole life to be free from being gay. I tried my whole life to please God. I tried my whole life to live the way God wanted me to, to be married to the opposite sex versus same sex. Now, these people love Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not every one of them were Jesus followers. Right. Lesbian trying not to be lesbian and follow Jesus, uh, homosexual, trying not to be a gay man, but I'm going to follow Jesus, right. gritting my teeth, I'm free, I'm going to be free, and then 20 years later, yeah, peace out. Right. And so I got very interested. Like, I, I want to I wanna be able to talk about it with people, right? And I felt very passionate for a group of people who whose sexual identity is same-sex attraction. Mm-hmm. And who love Jesus with all their heart, go to church, yeah. serve in a church. Right. Well, on the opposite side of the spectrum is, uh, I'm sorry, you're going to hell. Right. You better repent. Mm. You better turn. You better get rid of being gay. And well, they're saying I did do that, and I was miserable. I did. I was a man attracted to a man having sex with men, and I left that to serve Jesus and married a woman and had children to prove I must be normal. Mm-hmm. I was miserable my whole life. I was never my real self. I was never my authentic self until I realized I am gay. I went back. I, I married a man, and now I just love Jesus. Yeah. So the end result to the whole thing was God loves us just like you are. Mm-hmm. God accepts you just like you are. You do you and just love God, man. Mm -hmm. Love people and love God. So that's the gist of the, I'm gay, but I love God. How dare you tell me any different? I'm gay. I follow Jesus. How dare you tell me I can't? I'm gay. How dare you tell me Jesus isn't happy with me being gay? Mm -hmm. End of the show, right? right? And I just watched another Netflix show. (laughs) So tell me, why do you believe in Matthew 3, Mm -hmm. after an 18-year hiatus, the chapter that introduces Jesus starts out this way, two things that I think are interesting. Verse 2, repent Mm. and turn to God. Yeah. Then verse 7, who warned you to flee the wrath? So tell me your opinion. I, I, I thought it was a good argument. God loves me like I am. Right. God loves me, doesn't care. I'm gay. He's he accepts that. He made me that way, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I really tried to go, okay, I want to give the benefit of the doubt there, but when I go to scripture, I can't get around this. God doesn't accept us. Yeah. Where in scripture do you see that God ever accepted a human? Yeah. He can't accept us. Right. We are broken, right. dead lifeless to him, Mm -hmm. without hope, sinful, whether it's gay sin or just being born. Yeah. You're born in the image of Adam. Yeah, right. And so I want to hear what you think. Why do you think it starts out with such a hardcore introduction of the guy that's going to baptize Jesus going, dude, repent, repent. There's a wrath coming, repent. But yet we don't hear that today. You yeah. don't even hear repent. You don't even, that's, yeah. Honestly, why Why would I need to repent if my heart's good? Why would I need to repent if I love Jesus? Why would I need to repent if I read his Bible? Why do I need to repent if I go to church? Mm-hmm. Why, why, what do you mean repent? 
Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think God is always trying to move His creation back, and it's a and it's the word that we don't really like. I think I'm okay with repent, but I don't like what repentance means. And repentance means process. And Mm -hmm. I don't think we like process, especially Mm -hmm. in our culture today. Sure. I just want it right now. Just snap your fingers, Jesus, and change me. Because process means that even if I have same-sex attraction, that if I do repent, that doesn't mean that all of the feelings have gone away magically, that the way that I think has Mm -hmm. just all of a sudden disappeared. Mm -hmm that I do have to walk through a process. Mm -hmm. Same thing if I'm addicted to alcohol, that if I repent of, of drinking myself Mm -hmm. uh, into a coma, Mm -hmm. repentance doesn't mean that all of a sudden I have stopped having an emotional attachment to Mm -hmm. alcohol Mm -hmm. or dependent on it, that it will drain away my sorrows. Mm -hmm. I have to go through a process. And I think we don't really like that. Sure. That process that, that I think sometimes that we're sold that repentance means that God has healed me. Mm-hmm. Now, can he does that? And has he done that? Absolutely. He mm-hmm. can. But I think in more cases than not, mm-hmm. that it does require a process of sanctification. And the reason why is because God is trying to move you here from Adam and move you to Jesus. Okay. That, that, so that's what I want to talk about this week. I want to take all week long and talk about why do I need to repent? Mm-hmm. If God accepts me for who I am, right? Like, why would John need to come on the scene and go, repent, if God was going to just accept all of us for who we are? Yeah. Religious, non-religious, good, bad, ugly, evil, not evil, kind-hearted. Because the, the thought is, it's dirty people that need to repent, and as long as my heart's good, and my thinking's good, and my motives are good, and my intentions are good, well, why would I need to repent? Yeah. And what I'm finding out as I read Scripture Repentance is not because you do bad things. Repentance is not because you chose a lifestyle that God doesn't like. Repentance is not like you're a meth addict. You need to quit doing meth. Like, you know, I mean, you can you can play around with being a better person without ever repenting. Right. But repentance is, I admit, this is my thought. I'll, I'll kind of talk about it more this week. Repentance is, I come to an admission that on my best day, right. God doesn't accept me right. for who I am. Mm. And so, therefore, I have to turn to him, and then I'd like to talk this week about what happens when we turn to him. So here's a good question I want to talk about. Why would a human, yeah. good-hearted people, uh, people that do, I think we could say I know why a bad human would right. need to repent. Right, but like the th- a murderer. But the thinking is that, that we're all good or bad based on the lifestyles we choose or the actions. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason we're introduced to Jesus in chapter three with a guy screaming, repent. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to read this week of what Jesus said Mm -hmm. is going to really open up uh, some, you know, opportunity to go, does God view humans differently than humans view humans? And does God view himself differently than I view God? Mm -hmm. So does God view me differently than I view me, and do I view God differently than God views himself? And I want to talk about that this week. That's good. So thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us. Here's your question for today. Why would a human need to repent? Here's what I want you to talk about, think about as you read this chapter. Man, good people, bad people, ugly people, fat people, skinny people, whatever you (laughs) are, uh, the likelihood of this chapter introducing the King of Kings, Jesus, with this whole uh, story of a guy going, you need to repent. There's something powerful about repentance. We're going to talk about it all week. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.